What's up guys? All right, so we're gonna jump on this Jeep JK. We're gonna get some bigger wheels tomorrow. So trust me, it's gonna be really, really nice. Can't wait to get this thing moved. I wanna get it to the car wash. I wanna spray it off. I wanna clean up. Um, got a lot of things to do other than this, but here we have it. Here we have our rough country suspension parts. And we're gonna slap this on the Jeep real quick. So uh, pop this open. Alright guys, so we have our hardware here. Here's the bracket. This is another bracket that it comes with. This is going to hold, I believe, the um, shocks in. Um, and without further ado, oh, they, these are tiny. So I don't think I'm going to use the box shocks. More brackets. Some came from somewhere, but... These are tiny. Yeah. A bit we have the instructions, dual steering stabilizer. Just you scan that and uh, it will take you to a video. But it's cool. So we have everything here. Let's get it installed. So I think the first thing we're going to use, I uh, remove this bracket here. That the 15 year off is way, way much of a better fit. Uh, Get a pry bar. You know, so while I'm down here, I might as well just uh, tighten these up real quick. So, 15 millimeter should be the trick. guys all right so it's the next day here we're about to run and go grab these wheels and tires so we got the wheels and tires right in the back there um i don't think they have a tpms sensor in it those are middle grapplers it's not a lot of thread uh tread light on them it's about like maybe i would say 40%. Um, I don't think they're balanced neither. I'm looking at the back of them. I don't see weights. I don't feel sand. I hear nothing moving around. Uh, so I don't I don't know. We're going to check that out though. Uh, it should last this summer, maybe next winter. But like I said, this is my it's my beater. So it's not really a beater now, but it's it was or still is my older and more uh, beater vehicle. So. Right, so we just made it back and we're going to unload these tires. I'm gonna get these slap things on the Jeep real quick. I think I said it. It needs to be um, balanced. And I don't believe these tires have a TPMS sensor in it, which is unfortunate. I mean, I could take them out of the 40s and use them, or I could take them out of stock tires and use them. 
Matter of fact, that might be a better deal. So I might take them out of stock tires and reuse the TPMS sensors uh, for those. Um, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna put them on and see if it gives me a code. If it gives me a code, then we'll end up, uh, you know, basically just swapping the, you know, TPMS sensors in the future. Um, but yeah, cause I think we're gonna get this Jeep. We're gonna get it eventually uh, aligned. We're gonna take it with the wheels. So the wheels gonna get mounted, balanced, aligned and everything at the same time. We're not gonna like, you know, do it partial. All that's gonna be done at one time. But yes, it, but yesterday I did go install the dual steering stabilizers. I mean, that looks so good. I mean, I, I'm I'm happy that that is done. Um, one less thing to do. So let's check this Jeep up. All right, guys. So I completely forgot. I need to run and go grab some lug nuts. So I'm going to run to the auto zone real quick, which is in there, which is not too far, like maybe a, less than a mile away. I'm gonna grab some uh, lugs in and we, then we can flap them on. You guys, so we got what we need. So let's zip this up. The tires are on and out. That is more like it. I mean, if you come down here, look at it from here. That is a big boy right there. It was only 12 and a half wide. Uh, boys would have been 13 and a half wide. It would have been a much bigger Jeep. But I mean, this is massive. It sits directly the same height as the truck now. Look at that, finally. here and we got something from quadratech and we wanted to get this thing put back together um in order to do that we need to get the power steering line so that's what we end up getting end up grabbing one of these nice brand new power steering lines for the wrangler here and that's gonna pretty much help me complete the build the only thing i'm wondering is the lines i did transmission lines on my old three ram and they were kind of just like this all hard not many flexible pieces like this where it can bend so i'm trying to think about the best route to get this back in and i don't know i mean i, I know the easy thing probably would do to remove the grill remove everything and then get it in but i don't know how i'm gonna get it in but we will get it in so we gotta we gotta, we gotta map this out all right, so, all right man it is pouring rain out here we have to bring the mitsubishi out um <laughs> went and grabbed one of these uh looks beefier than i remember but um pretty much threads in into the gearbox and uh goes right into the power steering pump. So we're gonna install that right, well, I don't know if we're gonna get home because it's raining right now. Maybe a little on later on today, uh, we'll see. Um, I did install the line yesterday. It wasn't the original line. So basically I fabbed it up. I, I made it work. I pretty much fabbed it up to make it work. So the return line is in, which is great. But they can bend a little bit which allowed me to alter the root of it. So anyways, it's in. So I'm happy about that. Let's see if I can order up an in-yoke. Once I order up the in-yoke, we will be all set with the suspension. Um, anyway, so we're ready to get back to the house. You guys, so hours later, we have both of our lines in. Let me see if I can get to show y'all how this is looking. So we have our lines in, as you can see, this is the high pressure line. This is the return line. This is the one I modified. This is the stock one. The per high pressure line goes down. It runs around. Getting that line in was, I had to go around it. So I pulled it off, went around it, and then put it back. Uh, with the best way, easiest way. It's put a little fluid. I'm gonna clean that up. It's nothing familiar. Um, we're gonna restock on it, refuel and everything. Um, all the fluids putting everything back in um, basically refilling that because I did spill some um, engine coolant because that line and we're going to change the engine oil on this thing so I just want to make sure I get all the right information <coughs> <coughs> 
before uh, reinstalling everything. Guys, so we went out and we grabbed everything we need to fill the Jeep back up to work in condition, uh, especially the brake fluid. Um, so here, what we have here, this is a ATF plus four. This is a transmission fluid and the Jeep takes a transmission fluid um, for the uh, power steering, which was not, it's kind of weird, but again, it's, then again, it's not because I'm used to using this particular uh, fluid on the old three Ram that I once had. Mopar, um, I don't know, they do things a little differently. <laughs> in this jeep since it was lifted and she, i gotta tell you she's up there so you gotta turn the wheel and you gotta turn about like i heard 50 times i think that's over i think that's od i think here you don't want air in your your power steering uh line whatsoever um not only that it reduces power but it can actually damage your pump so you want to make sure you get all of that out so um me coming back checking this periodically every time i turn it I did about like 20 turns. I'm gonna do about like 10 more turns each way. So that way, um, that way it will guarantee that, you know, that's, that's squared away and that's actually safe. So, uh, all right, let's keep doing it. Give me any codes. Let's give me a check engine light. This here, it's giving me all type of codes, ABS, everything. Cause everything was disconnected. So <laughs> it's giving me all the codes. I don't know what this is for. So the check engine light is off. ABS light is on because the brakes are not done yet. They're not bled. Um, check engine light is off because the O2 sensor on the top of... Let me show y'all real quick. Y'all know yesterday, I think a lot of you guys know this, but for those who don't, the O2 sensor has to be in this air intake. So if the O2 sensor is not in the air intake, it will throw a code. So basically that's what that was. That, I'm sorry, you, that O2 sensor right there. So now, uh, and check engine light is off. Hey guys, it's the next day here. We got several things done with the Jeep, especially under the hood as concerned. We have um, a lot of stuff, things done under the hood. So now, the last thing we gotta do is bleed the brakes. In order to do this, like I said, we gotta remove this. This is already nice and clean. I cleaned it up yesterday, nice and clean. Make sure nothing gets in here. I'll put this to the side where it won't fall off. But um, yeah, so we're gonna make sure, get this clear. And I fabricated, I fabricated my own tool. So this is a self, pumping tool uh, so basically when you do this you pump the brake it will get all the air out the line it won't allow air to get in the line because here it's completely submerged so basically you need a water bottle something that will fit in here like this and this will go to the caliper itself i'm gonna show you how this work well i'm gonna, I'm gonna show it working so you gotta get an idea now coming in it's really starting to feel pretty tight as all the old fluid is getting pushed out brand new fluid is going in that looks solid see no air whatsoever in the line and look at that fluid the change of that fluid went from a bright yellow to now like an amber orange that's how you know you're doing a good job and when you're taking this off it's so much easier make sure you pinch it pinch it and then on the top Pull it and let the fluid go down and you get none on the ground then when you finish with it you could take it somewhere to an auto shop um somewhere where they can get rid of the waste so it doesn't pollute the environment all right guys it's the next day here um i have a couple of technical issues with the jeep as you can see it's not in the same location it's more pushed forward um i didn't move it i did drive around a block but it needs um, a couple of things. So first of all, the dust shield there, it scrapes against the brake rotor. I have to take each dust shield off, each wheel off. I'll do that over the weekend. I'll do that over the week. Y'all won't see that in the video. I'm just gonna do that over the week. Um, and another thing, I believe under the hood, the brake master cylinder, I believe it's going. Um, it's no longer holding pressure so i mean i fill the lines up completely and it tends to just uh, i guess you know doesn't hold brake pressure whatsoever once it started once you get rolling it doesn't hold so i will have to redo that i will have to replace that it's pretty simple those two lines there 
one bolt there and I believe one bolt there and uh it will have a new o-ring and whatever in the back even though you cannot see a visible leak it normally tends to leak back in here even though you won't see it on the ground or uh, you pretty much won't see it at all i think we got the old beast here so uh well not really old but you know good thing we got the the beast here and we're going to take this to work so if you guys are enjoying this content please feel free to get down there hit that like share and subscribe button for me um so I want to get this video pushed out for you guys. So I'll see you guys real soon in the next one. Uh, I have to get moving. So take care, y'all.